What's up, folks? This is the DFS 5-Pack, and we are here to talk about week one of uh, overlay uh, for uh, NFL, which is, I mean, 13 days away. That's crazy. I can't even believe we're talking about NFL, and it's so close. It's What a weird time. Like, I just want to ask you this. When do you think we'll be, like, back to normal, normal seat? Like, a year, a year and a half, two years, five years? What is normal? I have absolutely no idea. I mean, I guess that all depends on what your definition of the subject is, and everybody treats it a little bit differently. Uh, I'm hoping next year. Me too. But it's just when with this year being so messed up, you got to feel like it's going to affect next year. Yeah, you would think so. Like, I don't even know when that next year's NBA is going to start. Like, I think Christmas. Yeah, it's starting a little, little bit later. So, like, exactly. So, it's just everything's just messed up but you know what we'll take it because i remember like a few weeks ago we had nothing it's true a month ago we had basically nothing to talk about as far as sports going now we got almost too much and then in a month from now we're going to be down to just football yeah but just football is fine because especially with your college up in the air i mean the nfl is going to be on multiple days a week yeah this is true you can give me give me nfl every day of the week and i'll be happy all right yeah exactly so, i mean you get four or five days in NFL, though, we're good Absolutely. All right, guys. So we're just going to check out. Uh, we're going to go through uh, one of the NFL schedules. Uh, again, we're keeping it real, real on this one. We got an 11 4 jackpot on the $22 one, but uh, this is really kind of a first glance at NFL. We will update this one um, much, much closer to kickoff on that Sunday. But this is just us kind of like knocking the rust off a little bit, starting to talk NFL and starting to get really into it. Yeah, man. I, I'm already getting into it. It's going to be tough, but I'm I'm excited to dive in here. Starting off right away with a, a banger, plus in Atlanta. I mean, insert basically NFL player in Atlanta here, and then you got Breeze against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. I definitely lean towards Wilson. How about you? Well, I lean towards Wilson as well. Um, I mean, I always like the dome, even in the early weeks when weather isn't an issue. Just a faster track. Russell Wilson throws in the yardage. The other thing I remember about you know playing against uh, a Tom Brady offense, the dink and dunk you to death, long drives, fewer possessions potentially for Drew Brees. Flip side of that being is Drew Brees is going to need to you know what we would believe to be play catch up, or not play catch up, but you know put up points against Tom Brady. I'm going to go Russell Wilson, but this is kind of like when you have James Harden versus Giannis. I don't really want to pick against either of them. I think you're on mute. Okay, I'm not sure. Not on. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right, cool. So, not exactly sure what to expect out of Tampa, but I'm not going to be surprised if like their offense is more throwing, you know, throwing, you know, opening, opening it up more than, than New England was with Belichick. Just have to wait and see. For me, like Wilson is just a better fantasy quarterback than Breeze, right? At this point, right? Well, and because New Orleans has that you know, really good running game that they can rely on potentially. I don't know. My gut tells me Russell Wilson, but this will be a bottom tier pick for me. Fair enough. All right. Josh Allen versus Kyler Murray. Give me Josh Allen. I like the idea of Kyler Murray this year, but let's not forget how good San Francisco's defense is. Yeah, you're right. Give me Josh Allen. I'm with you. Yeah. I'll, I'll pick this one too. I mean, Josh Allen is the king of the QB sneak for a touchdown right now too. Yeah. I mean, listen, I like Kyler Murray more than Josh Allen simply put. But, but in this matchup, he's at home against the Jets, against the you know NFC champions. And while I think San Fran takes a step back this year, I don't really think it's because of their D. I mean, this is not a good spot for Murray. No, not at all. And the Jets' defense is not something you're scared of. And quite frankly, like we all like good things out of Kyler Murray coming up. But at this point, Josh Allen has been a better fantasy quarterback than Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. Well, Kyler Murray's only been around one year, so it's hard. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, we have a small sample size. I mean, you know, it's not like we have 12 years of Josh Allen, though, either. So they could both be much better this year. Too young. Murray was, up. How would you say this? I think Murray was better in his rookie year than Josh Allen was in his rookie year. Probably. Uh, very, I'd have to go back and look, but probably. But very comparable to your point. Like, listen, you're right. Like, we like Kyler Murray. A lot of people really like Josh Allen this year, too. I know that I'm not as high on him as some others are, but. I mean, a lot of people think that he's better than Kyler Murray. I get that. Yeah, he had Stephon Diggs this year, too. So all of a sudden, he's got a receiving core that he hasn't had before. Truth. Um, and, like, listen, like I said, I like Murray a lot, but it's just, like, it's an awful spot for him. 
San Fran's D is good, and I'm with you. I could definitely see them taking a, back, a step back this year. The Super Bowl hangover seems to be a pretty reliable thing to bet on. They're still going to be a pretty good defense, though. Yeah, I would assume so, at least. All right, Carson Wentz at Washington, Rodgers at Minnesota. Uh, love me some Green Bay Packers. You guys all know this, but give me Carson Wentz here, and I'll definitely pick this one. Yeah, Wentz, easy um, for sure. Wentz. All right, Stafford against the Bears, Kirk Cousins against Green Bay. I, I trust Stafford more, even against yeah, a harder team. I don't know how much harder it is either. I definitely like Stafford here. I think Detroit could be sneaky, and I expect Stafford to play well. Yeah, I like Stafford from a fantasy perspective. Give me Stafford, and I'll probably even pick this one. All right, Baker Mayfield at Baltimore, Mitch Trubisky at Detroit. I mean, I don't even think we have firm confirmation that Trubisky's going to be the starter, so this is a tough one to really spend a lot of time on. Um I mean, you, got, you don't love the spot for Baker Mayfield, but I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time on this one. I haven't heard much out of Chicago yet. No, you got to assume that if Trubisky wins the job, he's playing well. I'm still going to go with Baker Mayfield. I can't imagine picking Trubisky here. I'd just rather not pick it. Yeah, well, I would much rather go after Detroit, though, than go after Baltimore. And in a neutral spot, give me Baker Mayfield over Trubisky right now. But Detroit and Baltimore, I mean, those are two substantially different defenses. Fair enough. All right, Michael Thomas against Tampa Bay, Delvin Cook against Green Bay. Give me Michael Thomas. Surest thing in the football. Yeah, give me Michael Thomas. All right, Alvin Kamara versus Julio Jones. Give me Kamara. Give me Julio. Yeah, like that's a tough one. I'm with you. I like offense more in that game than I do in the Tampa Bay New Orleans game. I could see the defense in the Tampa Bay game like stepping up big time. Okay. George Kittle versus Devontae Adams. I think almost every time I would take Adams over Kittle because Adams like needs to play well. But in this specific situation, all I can remember from last year is that Arizona against tight ends. Yes, Arizona has been bad against tight ends. Now they made their first round pick like a hybrid linebacker type. And I'm I would imagine that there that would change this year but i think this is close anyway so i'm still gonna go piddle yeah i just expect a lot of running a lot of green bay this year as well so i don't know give me kettle yeah next one's easy for me too eckler yeah all day i mean I, it's a lot of hype at this point but like looking at this aj Dillon kid uh who's got tree trunks for legs i, I mean i'm not sure how you know aaron jones i'm a big fan but there's something really suspicious about a second round pick on a running back and where the head is at of the head coach. I'm with you. It's more than suspicious. Like it kind of sounds like what you're saying is like, you're not going to be surprised if like all of a sudden Dylan's like the lead back. I mean, Aaron Jones had almost 20 touchdowns last year. I can't remember the exact amount. I would be shocked if he scored double digit touchdowns this year, like flabbergasted. That's, I mean, that's all I need to hear. So uh, it's just it's kind of a side point on this one, and this is where, like, sometimes I feel like people really lose their train of thought when trying to evaluate, like, you know, Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, and guys like this. And they're like, look at Rodgers' huge step down on touchdowns this year. It's like sometimes it's not Rodgers' fault that Aaron Jones took it from a handoff on the six-yard line and scored. It just lowered his opportunities. Like, that was so random last year because Aaron Jones is not a goal line back, and A.J. Dillon this year is built like a goal line back. Jones is going to take one of the biggest step downs and touchdowns that I think we've maybe have ever seen. I'm I'm relying on, on how you see it, man. All right, Godwin versus Evans. Uh, you have to assume Lattimore is going to be on Evans, so I'm going to go with Godwin. Um, you know, it's interesting because it's not Jameis now and it's Tom Brady, so we're going to see what the connections are like. But I'll take the non-elite cornerback matchup. If I'm with you. It's funny. Evans has some weird stat lines against New Orleans, like. He's basically been very boomer bust. Give me the consistency with Godwin. Yeah, and also Godwin goes across the middle, and that's the thing about Mike Evans. I think he could potentially be a little bit of a disappointment this year. His strong suit is not Tom Brady's strong suit, whereas I think Godwin could be an absolute beast this season, going across the middle the way he does. To be, fair, you, to be fair, though, you've always been a, a Mike Evans hater, though. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'll accept that. <laughs> fair enough. All right, Nick Chubb against Baltimore, Joe Mixon against the Chargers. Um, can't get that performance against Baltimore from Nick Chubb out of my head right here. But 
I got to go Mixon here. It's just so much of a better spot, and he's the guy there. Like, Chubb's the guy in Cleveland, but they also got Kareem Hunt lurking. They do? I'm just not convinced Cincinnati's offense is, like, that great week one, right? Like, brand-new quarterback. I know he's the number one overall pick, but at what point have we seen Cincinnati's offense just blow up? So I'm going to side with your boy Chubb right here. I'm going to take the talent to Nick Chubb. Okay. I, I mean, I certainly hope you're right. I, I figured you would. <laughs> All right, Mark Andrews against Cleveland, Kenny Galladay against Chicago. Give me Galladay. I, again, I like Andrews to have some touchdowns, but I, I just I'm a big Kenny Galladay guy. I am too, but I think the Browns have defensive problems, so I'm going to go Andrews here because I think teams are going to be able to move the ball on the Browns pretty well. You know what this is really doing for me? Get me absolutely salivating to really talk about NFL DFS just because it's like our first look. I barely looked into any of this stuff, but it's really starting to get me hyped. Yeah, I'm 100% with you, man. Speaking of which, guys, the football package will be on sale for 20% off for a couple more days. It's up on the website. Go grab yourself some membership that covers every single week uh, throughout the postseason, the regular season. We do the main slate and the primetime slate. Love to have you guys come join the team. Mm -hmm. All right. Allen Robinson, DJ Moore. And it is weird seeing LV right there. It is weird. Um, yeah, it makes you, it gives like a whole, it like messes with you. Or do you agree? Yeah, I'm going to take Allen Robinson. Um, I like DJ Moore, but I also really like Allen Robinson. And, you know, I don't know. I'll take Robinson, but it's still one I'm, I'm up in the air on. I'll take Robinson too. Both good spots. Give me Robinson. All right, Keenan Allen versus Odell Beckham. Uh, not a great spot for Beckham. Good spot for Allen, but with a new quarterback. Because if this was Phillip Rivers, this would be one of the easier ones on the docket for me, but it's not. Tyrod Taylor. Yeah, that's a big difference. Yeah, give me Odell. Tyrod Taylor is all you needed to say. All I needed to say. I don't mind Tyrod throwing intermediate routes, though, is where Allen specializes. Ooh. So I'm going to stick with Keenan. Uh, only because, again, we've talked about this in Cleveland. There's a lot of mouths to feed. Yeah, there are. But, like, kind of with my main point, with my other point about Andrews, like, I think that the Browns are going to need to, like, throw. So and that also makes me more comfortable on Odell here. Uh, I think it's close. But give me Odell. Well, with the news that Leonard Fournette was released this morning, I'm going to go Miles Sanders all day. I was going to take him in the first place. They just made it a little bit easier, and this one will be off the board. Yeah. All right. Adam Thielen against Green Bay. Devontae Parker against New England. Adam Thielen. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have Gilmore all over Parker. Skinny yes. Thielen. This one's easy for me. Uh, this, As of right now, this might be my top one on the board. Fair. All right, Edelman versus Calvin Ridley. <sighs> Not 100% sure what to expect out of Edelman this year, but they don't even 100%, I don't know, we're assuming it's Cam. Give me Calvin Ridley. Yeah, give me, I like offense in that game, so give me Ridley. All right, Zach Ertz against Washington, DJ Chark against Indianapolis. Give me Ertz. Give me Ertz also, although with full recognition that Chark has higher upside. Agreed. Uh, Calvin Ridley against T.Y. Hilton. We just have Ridley up here against Edelman. So you're going to have an option to choose one of these and not necessarily both of them. Uh, I'll side with Ridley against Edelman for right now and not even pick this one because I don't like picking with or against T.Y. Hilton. Mr. 202 touchdowns or four catches for 12 yards. Same, although I will say, and I don't know how many we can pick, but the bottom one, like I definitely like Ridley over Edelman more than I like Ridley over Hilton. But my favorite of them is Metcalf over Hilton just because I really like Metcalf. I do also really like Metcalf. I still never like picking against T.Y. Hilton, though, right? Because he's like, either, it seems like it's either an easy win or an easy loss. Yeah, I'm with that. So, all right, give me, uh, I guess we'll pick the one, Ridley versus Edelman. All right. Uh, this one's easy for me, and it seems weird to say it because you never would have said this three years ago, but I'll take Kenyon Drake over Le'Veon Bell, and I don't even have to, I don't, I'm not even really concerned with that. I know San Francisco's defense is good, like we talked about earlier. Drake played really well against them last year. Uh, I'm not a big believer in Le'Veon Bell right now at all. What don't you like about Le'Veon Bell? Um, 
coach comes out, announces that he is going to have fewer, a smaller workload this year. Uh, I think his long carry last year was like 17 yards. Um, he should get a couple yeah. of catches. But, I mean, even with the coach already, it sounds like he's kind of taken away from him. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's not a good spot for Drake, but I'll side with you here. I, and this seems weird to say. I think Drake might just be better than Le'Veon Bell right now. Maybe. I'm not willing to say that yet, but I'm not willing to say you're wrong. Right. If, there, if you have as many touches as Bell had last year and you can't break one, you know, 20 yard clarity, if he did have one, it was one towards the end of the year and that was the only one. That's, I don't care how bad your offensive line is. That's pretty putrid. No. And the other thing about this question is like, if you think about it in like a very simple form, Kenyon Drake is like a late second round, early third round draft pick in fantasy drafts right now, you know, somewhere around there. Le'Veon Bell is a few rounds deeper. And you're not playing Bell over Drake in a year long week one. And Buffalo's defense is good too. That's not. It's yeah. not like they're playing against you know some scrubs. Exactly. I mean, I saw an article I briefly touched on the other day, or I read, briefly read over, was that in your fantasy drafts this year, you should not have Levy on Bell any higher than an RB two, and that's a low upside RB two. I'm with you. <sighs> That was even a little uh, more firm than I'm willing to go. But, man, it's really eye-opening to think about, you know, a year off. He's aged. It's just, I don't know. It's just not his thing anymore. I'm with you, man. So, I don't know, guys. These are our first thoughts on this one. Uh, we will do a, a more firm, uh, more, what's the best way to look at it? More yeah. higher opinionated version of this? Yeah, more concrete. And I get, we might do even one more. So, this might be the first of three or first of two. Who knows? Yeah, with baseball and basketball running simultaneously, like all of our NFL thoughts have definitely kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit. But now I'm excited to get back into it. I mean, we are 13 days away from, you know, opening day. I'm excited to uh, – I'm real excited for two Sundays from now. Yeah, me too. All right, guys, click the thumbs up button. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.